let me take a selfie. Good morning, Baker. I'm Mackenzie Dunning. And I'm Connor Aikie. The real question you ask yourself is, do you like dancing? If you do, Encore Dance tryouts are coming up. Kayla got more information. The Encore Dance Company here at Baker participates in community events and a dance showcase concert in May. Members also study topics for a career in dance, as well as the history of dance and its impact on the world. Here is Ms. Norwood for information on upcoming tryouts. Hey, I'm here with Ms. Norwood. Um, when are tryouts? Tryouts are May 21st and 22nd. That's in two weeks. Okay, and what do they need to bring to tryouts? They need to bring their selves, and um, they need to bring a something to stand out, like a top, make the judges pop. Um, the first day, the 21st, is the clinic. That's where they'll actually learn the dance um, that they'll be performing on the 22nd. They don't have to do their own choreography. Um, I'll give them what they need, and then they perform it for the judges on the Thursday, the 22nd. Okay, and um, who are you accepting? I am accepting upcoming freshmen, so that's eighth grade, and then through upcoming seniors. If you have any questions about tryouts, go talk to Miss Norwood. She's located in the girls' locker room in the gym. This has been Kayla Morgan signing off for the last time. Back to Mac and Connor in the studio. Thank you, Kay Morgan. Are you looking for a job? It depends. Well, on this job, you uh, work 24 hours a day. You get no pay, you get no days off, and you constantly have to be there for your employees. Uh, Connor, that sounds kind of cool. That's, it's called being a mother. Oh. Mother's Day is approaching and Jordan and Kennedy went and got some details and information on what you can do to show your mother some appreciation this week. Hey y'all, I'm Jordan Fisher. And I'm Kennedy Slaughter. As you all know, Mother's Day is this Sunday, so Kennedy and I went out and interviewed some teachers that are moms and see what they want for Mother's Day. Let's see what they had to say. It's like a nice, comfortable day at the beach. And afterwards, an afternoon at the Battle House. For Mother's Day, I would like a fun-filled day at the beach with my children and no cooking. A good Mother's Day present would be for my children to come over and just give me their time. Well, the best Mother's Day present for me is something my son does every year. He goes to the creek out there and catches me a big old mess of red bellies and goggle eyes. Mm, I love it. Now let's see what some of the Baker students are getting their moms for Mother's Day. I'm getting my mom a Pandora bracelet with a charm that says number one mom. <laughs> For Mother's Day, I don't have any money, so I'm going to get my mom. I'm going to bring her breakfast in bed. <laughs> now I'm going to get my some chocolates and a card. I'm getting my mom a undying love. I'm going to take my mom out to dinner and probably get her some flowers or something. Just something really sweet or for her. Yeah. I'm getting my mom some lunch. So, there should be no excuse why you don't get your mom something for Mother's Day because she deserves it. So, me and Jordan came up with some helpful tips for budgeting wise that y'all can use. Here's some really good tips if you need a pricing range. For a dollar, you can get a nice juice and McDouble. If you want a $5 or something, you can always get her a candy and a card. $10, a plant and a card. $20, you could get her a dozen roses and a card maybe. And $50, flowers and even a hamster. $100, a Pandora bracelet would be really nice. We hope that y'all make Sunday very special for your mom. So, if you're out of ideas to use for Mother's Day, you can always remember to use our tips. This has been Jordan Fisher and Kennedy Slaughter. Back to y'all in the studio. Those are some great ideas. The Baker High School Drama Department last week performed the play Pippin. Dakota and Monique got the follow-up. Hi, I'm Monique Macmillan. And I'm Dakota Patrick. As you may know, last week's Baker's Drama Department performed their annual musical, Pippin. We caught up with the director and a cast member to see how the experience left them. I'm standing here with uh, Mr. Brown, the director of Pippin. So, Mr. Brown, why, what made you come to your city and choosing Pippin as this year's musical? Um, actually, it's one of those shows that I had the opportunity to see at uh, Actually, my old high school did a production of it. Uh, Shades Valley High School in the Birmingham area, they performed it for this year's uh, state trump hour competition. And uh, I've actually seen the show about four different times. It's really becoming popular again. It's been revised on uh, Broadway. Uh, we actually get to see that on our, our trip to New York City. Mm -hmm. um, but it's one of those shows that I feel is very important for high schoolers to, uh, uh, to see because it's all about trying to find out um, 
who you are and what you want in life. And I think if you pay attention to the moral message of it, you could probably uh, skip a few uh, speed bumps on the way. Mm -hmm. So. And I know uh, even we had SCTC, Mobile hosted, hosted SCTC this year, and uh, Pierce Cleveland, who played Charlemagne, uh, got to meet uh, Terrence Mann, who played Charlemagne on Broadway. Yeah, we had, it was kind of interesting to have a, this cast of Pippin met the majority of the new Broadway cast. Uh, Pierce got to meet Terrence Mann mm -hmm. while he was at SETC. Um, our choreographer, Kristen O'Keefe, actually got to, to sit in on one of, his, uh, one of his speeches, one of his classes. Um, we also we went to New York City. We had uh, some of our Pippin cast members got to actually meet chorus members and the leading player and uh, uh, Pippin himself uh, in the Broadway show. So that was uh, really cool uh, to see our cast and this very top-notch professional cast working together and, uh, and uh, you know, getting some advice. You know, uh, I know that Pierce informed me that, uh, you know, he actually asked Terrence Mann some advice on how to play the role. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it was pretty cool hearing those stories. So did Pippin uh, turn out how you always thought it would? It did. It was actually a very, very, very difficult show, which I had anticipated a little bit, but I, I was thinking primarily it's the dancing that's going to be the, the most difficult part. Uh, and when I started dealing with a lot of the tech on the show, because there's this magic, it's a very whimsical, uh, extraordinary world, and so bringing that to life with uh, with you know, with the lighting, with the set, things like that, um, it got really complicated. Um, of course, our storm that week was mm -hmm. kind of an added challenge. Um, so I think in the end, we had actually a wonderful, uh, wonderful turnout. We had some very nice houses, lots of compliments from the parents. We got two standing ovations. So I think that the community was very pleased by the performance. And uh, once all the hard work was done and everything was was set. Um, I was, it was a show that I was very proud of. I thought it was a very beautiful show. I agree. Now it's time for the cleanup process. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you, Mr. Brown. Thank you. Appreciate it. Hi, I'm here with Pierce, one of the cast members of Pippin. So, Pierce, what was your role in the play? I was King Charlemagne. And how did you prepare for doing three nights in a row for the show? Well, uh, we've been rehearsing for about five months. Wow. And personally, I had to do a lot of research on my character. And I had to. Uh, I met with the uh, King Charlemagne on Broadway. Wow, that's awesome. And what was your um, best memory of the whole entire experience? Ooh, probably the very last night where everyone was just crying because uh -huh. it was ending. Yeah, that's that's amazing. There you have it. As you can see, the production of Pippin took a lot of work and dedication. I can't wait to see what the drama department puts on next year. And Pippin ain't, ain't easy. We'll spend my Nick Macmillan. And Dakota Patrick. Back to you guys at the studio. Thanks, you guys. And here's Trent with your weekend weather. Hey, guys. It's very rainy here in the BH1 studio. Tonight, there will be a low of 70 with an 80% chance of rain. Saturday, there will be a high of 80 with a low of 70 with a 50% chance of rain. Sunday, there will be a high of 83 with a low of 71 with a 41% chance of rain. So hopefully this rain hurry up and goes away. Thank you, Trent. Hannah has some great ideas on ways you can spend your time this weekend. And here's Hannah with this week's entertainment report. Good evening, Baker. This Hello. is VH1 News. No. With Hannah Lupo. Hi. And Stephen. Yes. The baseball team plays Spain Park at 5 and 7 at Baker. Mom's night out comes Friday, so go see ya. And Mother's Day is Sunday. So all you late people, go buy your mom a Mother's Day present. Because it's Mother's Day. Exactly. And it's very important. Very important. This is this weekend's entertainment. With Stephen and Lupo. Back to you guys in the studio. Thank you, Anna. And here's Rylan with your sports report. Thanks, Rylan. To end our story, we decided to say the senior goodbye for last. On May 20th, our seniors will no longer be called seniors, but alumni. Jessica and Emily went to give our seniors their final goodbye. This has been the seniors last week. We caught up with our fellow senior classmates for our final farewell. Let's see what they had to say. Okay, my favorite anchor is uh, Jacob Jones, JJ the Jet Plane. Our favorite memory of Baker is when we dress as bunnies. Yay! <laughs> my plans after high school are going to go over to Faulkner and then transfer over to South or any other college. My favorite memory would definitely be being in the Horn of Hoogans and the Neon game. Uh, my plans for after we graduate are to go to South for a semester or a year and then transfer up to Auburn and start my career in coaching. 
the worst day ever at Baker for me was my sophomore year. On the first day of school, me and Donovan had the same class. And the next week came and a teacher pulled him out of my class and it was just a bad day because my buddy went in my class. My worst day was the first day of school when we came back to school. <laughs> my worst day was uh, freshman year Mr. Fagan's class where Kenny No tripped me and I hit my head on the corner of the desk and had about an hour. Hey, his head was like this big too for like two months. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, my worst day at Baker was when Josh hit, we was in Mr. Baker class freshman year. He slapped me in the back of my neck for no reason at all. <laughs> you got bread for it. All right. So, Baker. so, when I was the freshman, I was walking down the hall, and then I was walking by this big guy. So then the guy hugged this girl, then he broke off the hug, and then he ended up backing into me, and he slammed me into a locker. My favorite game of the year was the Murphy game, because we won 34-20, first time ever beat Murphy. Just the emotions after winning that game is a lot different than winning any other game. It's just, like you said, it was the first time you ever beat him, so it's really, really high back for that game. It's a really good memory. Plus, everybody came together, did teamwork on offense and defense. What I'm doing at the high school is I'm going to go to college, get my education, uh, work while I'm in school, and get my degree, make some money. Uh, I'm going to miss Baker, though, missing all the pretty girls every day, and some teachers, and football. That's it. I've been asked to give some advice to seniors because uh, this is your last week of school, hopefully the, for the majority of you, not all of you. But uh, at the beginning of the year on the first prank, I kind of wrote down everything that y'all planned to be. And uh, I've had a different revelation on that. Uh, my advice to you all seniors would be stay close to your faith. Uh, stay on some type of path. And if you get diverted from the path, you know, still stay close to your uh, faith and, and, and constantly strive to do something good with your life, okay? Because you all are 100% pure potential. You never give up on that. Uh, my kids at home keep saying this YOLO thing about you only live once. Don't go off the thing. Hold on. Sorry. Stop. All right. So, uh, I would say uh, the whole YOLO thing, you only live once, but Live every day to its fullest. You know, try to make the most of it. Uh, create as many friends as you can. Stay away from enemies. Uh, but stay on some type of path to stay close to your faith. Uh, you never can go wrong when you're there. Uh, the career cruising, uh, the choices that you make, you know, always try to live to do something that's gonna make you happy. Don't worry about the money. Just worry about something that's gonna make you happy. Hopefully you found your calling while you're here in high school, but if you didn't, uh, at least go to two years of junior college and maybe you'll get the answer then. But the faith thing is the one thing I strongly believe in, and I would strongly advise anybody to stay close to it. Uh, that's about it. I wish we could have had another assembly or something like that. But uh, that's the one thing that's got me, and I hope it works out for the senior today. Okay? Bye. This has been Jessica Weller and Emily Roberts signing, signing off, off for, for the last time. Back to y'all in the studio. Thanks, y'all. And this ends our show. Signing off for the very last time on BH1. I'm Mackenzie Dunning. And I am Connor Aiki. And good luck to all of our seniors graduating. Including me. Bye. Let me take another selfie.